So calcium oxalate, that's uh, what we have saturated. We can write our reaction, calcium 2 plus plus C2O4 2 minus. These are both aqueous. Okay. So we got both of those. We want to know KSP. And they, let's see what they give us. They give us information that can help us solve for the oxalate concentration. Unfortunately, we have to do a titration problem to get that, but we have information to do that. So what's going to happen is, uh, it kind of looks like this. If Let's just hypothetically draw out the ice table, so maybe it'll help you visualize. But you wouldn't have to do this to solve the problem. If you were doing the ice table for this problem, if it was some other problem, you could ignore the solid. These would be zeros initially. So then you'd go plus x and plus x. And so there'd be just x and x here on the E line. Okay. And so you would go KSP equals just x squared. Or really, the concentration of this is going to equal the concentration of this because it's calcium 2 plus times the oxalate 2 minus. So those two are going to be equal to, equal to the x value. Okay. So what we're going to do is when we use the information from the titration to find the value of the oxalate from this... Uh, it's kind of a chem 2A or chem 2B if you want titration. We're going to say that these two concentrations are equal because it's saturated. Is that okay? So we're going to we're going to like do this little calculation to find uh, oxalate. It'll be equal to the calcium. We'll just multiply. We'll square that value, whatever it is, and that's KSP. Is that okay. All right. So now uh, for the titration part. Uh, you have calcium oxalate and uh, potassium uh, permanganate, or no, yeah, potassium permanganate, and you have 4.8 liters. before you do the calculation is a mole ratio. And since it's a redox, we have to do a redox reaction to find the molar ratio to be able to plug into our calculation that we're going to do in a second. So let's do the redox. It tells you what it is. Oxalate goes to C... Uh, it goes to CO2 and the permanganate goes to MN2 plus, so the permanganate So you have to balance this using Chem2A redox techniques. You need this molar ratio right here. Because what you're going to do is find the moles of permanganate molar ratio to find the moles of the oxalate in your titration divided by the volume to find the molarity here that you're going to square to get KSP. Is that kind of okay? You want me? I'm not going to, I didn't want to balance the redox because I'm not specifically going to test you on redox. This was just fun in the homework so that you're going to have fun do the redox. But you want me to say it again how I'd solve it? You bounce this. 
you, there'd be numerical values here. They're probably not one each. Once you got that, you take this. You see up here, milliliters times the molarity. That's going to get you moles of the permanganate. Molar ratio will get you moles of the oxalate. Whatever it is, 5 to 2, 7 to 1, whatever. Then you divide by the volume to get the molarity of the oxalate. That's this. This is equal to it. You square it, you know, square it, and that's GSP. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, I'll give you the values if you need it. The final answer is going to be 4.1 times 10 to the 9. The ratio, the molar ratio that you're going to need, it's going to end up being a 5 and a 2. So that'll be a 5 and that'll be a 2 when you balance the redox. Is that okay? So the redox isn't that important, but knowing the concentration, what to do once you get the concentration, that's important. Is that okay? Okay.